We are one-on-one -on -one with Iowa House Speaker Pat Grassley. Find out why he is not ready to say whether lawmakers will follow through with all of what the governor wants them to pass this session. Also find out whether he thinks his famous 87-year-old grandfather will run again or whether he will run for that U.S. Senate seat next year instead. And in the Insider's Quick Six, whether it's time to end tenure protection for university professors. From your local election headquarters, this is the Insiders with Dave Price. Welcome to the Insiders. Pat Grassley is in his second year as Iowa House Speaker. With the strain of the COVID-19 pandemic carrying over for most of his first year in that position, schools, food banks, small businesses, renters and parents, they've all suffered the strain. I asked him whether lawmakers should devote more state resources to help. From the, the standpoint of rolling out the vaccine, I think the legislature has to be very careful. You know, let the experts um, that, that can remove politics from that do the rollout. So from that standpoint, I think that's best done through Department of Public Health. Uh, I would say from the standpoint of, I think we're passing legislation that really uh, helps with Iowans and their recovery. Right now, we, um, we just yesterday debated over five, I think it was five to seven bills dealing with uh, childcare. That's been a huge issue we've heard about before the pandemic making sure folks have the ability to stay and get back into the workforce. Um, we passed a bill earlier in session already requiring the option of 100% in-person learning. I think that is huge from the standpoint of recovery uh, from COVID, but also, you know, we talk about things like mental health. That's a big issue when it comes to mental health. We were hearing from a lot of people that students were really struggling with the uh, alternative options that were being used. And so I think we've already been passing bills that just naturally help with the recovery. You mentioned those child care bills. If you look at the votes on there, I think there was one where it was maybe 70 something, 20 something, but most of them were high 80s or even in the 90s, almost unanimous. Yeah. As you went through those half dozen or so bills here, do you th was it the pandemic itself that kind of pushed everybody to really jump on board here or, or was it just building or what? Well, I think that, so we've been passing, we've, we've worked on those bills the last couple of years and it's something that our caucus has really embraced as an issue that we've heard from our constituents. Remember, we represent 97 of the 99 counties. So we feel like we take ideas from all across the state and then we put them into legislation when we come down here. Then I think we've reached a point where, you know, I was, if not the highest, one of the highest states in the nation with both parents working out of the household. And so this is just a demand that not only has been put on the state for our economy to keep our economy healthy, but with COVID, I think it's really put a spotlight on it. So yeah, we've been able to pass those bills in a bipartisan manner and trying to address affordability, accessibility, safe child care, off ramps for folks that want to advance in their career. So it was a very broad uh, spectrum of bills. One of these plans would raise that, that tax credit, raise the income level so more people can get that tax credit to make this more affordable and you're giving credits for businesses that provide child care for their employees. You're allowing some people to care for more children than they could have in the past. Is anything mm -hmm. that you've done already or perhaps working on going to help things from the business side of things? Some of the business owners talk about, you know, there's just not a lot of money coming in, right? So they can only pay their employees so much and it's not a lot of money and it can be very challenging to find qualified workers at such low wages. Will anything help with that? Well, a couple things from the standpoint of we've, we've, we're working on opening up some of these programs to qualify for some of the incentive programs that exist to create these facilities and uh, keep, you know, expand and refit these uh, facilities that are across the state. We are also passed, one of the ones we looked at last night, increased the provider rate as well. So we're, I think we're taking a very holistic approach and looking at all some of the things that you touched on as well, but trying to address uh, all the way from cost. You know, there's some places where, and probably a lot of places, you're paying more on your childcare costs if you have two to three kids and you work outside the home than you do on your mortgage. And we think that it isn't our responsibility to just uh, write a check to everyone and say, here, here's your, to pay for your childcare. We wanna give some options. You know, like you said, the tax credit, doubling it from 45 to 90,000 in eligibility, be able to utilize that credit I look at that as a perfect example of something that government can do in a responsible way. You see some of the conversations on the federal level of perhaps increasing the child credit, the child dependent credit there. Is anything, have you looked at anything on our state taxes where families could get more of a deduction per child? Is that something you'd consider? Uh, at this point, I mean, I, we haven't had that conversation specifically. 
I think any I think any time we look we're looking at the opportunity. I would say this, we're looking at any opportunity we can to reduce the uh, the tax burden on hardworking Iowans. We obviously, as Republicans, that's a part of our conversation every year. So as things like that come before the legislature, we wanna be a part of those conversations. And uh, you know, again, that would also contribute to what we're seeing as far as recovery within the state. When it comes to taxes, you're under a far different scenario than uh, grandpa in DC is here, right? Because they don't have to deal with balanced budgets, you do. So how do you, when you all are looking at different scenarios here, because I know you want some kind of tax reform eventually, how do you work your way through that when you know you have to make the money line up at the end of the year? Yeah, well, look at 2018 is a perfect example. We passed the largest tax cut in the history of the state. Um, and so when we passed that, we did it in this, we stair-stepped that in to make sure that, you know, we could pass the largest tax cut and not jeopardize the budget. And so we've done that in a responsible way um, and we're in the process of fully implementing uh, all pieces of that that we passed. And so there could be more that we would want to do within that tax cut that we passed and maybe in addition to it. Um, but again, we've left our position as far as the budget goes, the number one ranked state by our peers in preparedness for COVID. So the decisions that we've made have left us in a position to um, follow through with our commitments on education, have left us in a position where we haven't had to go in and slash all, all parts of the budget. We've also been able to pass the largest tax cut and maintain uh, our path forward on that by the decisions that we've made. Will you talk about your rules for members here? Obviously, Democrats were unhappy with you that you were not requiring masks for members when they're in the building, when they're out on the, out on the House floor. Representative Beth Wessel Chrishell kind of protested wearing jeans, which violates the dress code there. Is that tension still there? Well, it looks like to me that House Democrats are more worried about blue jeans and masks than they are the policies for Iowans. So I would say, yes, I think it still exists. And to be very clear on this, I, in fact, I appreciate you asking the question. Representative Wessel Crochelle was not removed from the floor. Uh, she stayed on the floor. So had it been a situation of a mask, if they wanted to use that hypothetical, uh, the member would still have been on the floor. I don't think it's my job. Uh, and, it, and I don't think that uh, really it should be of the legislature to be demanding that the state patrol walks in and removes a member of the house based on wearing jeans or not wearing jeans. I've been very clear since the beginning of session. I may not recognize you to speak, but you're still gonna be able to be there and vote uh, on bills and amendments for your constituents because that's what we've been all asked to do. And that's where I think uh, the, our caucus is coming from the standpoint before session. We all ran for office. We went through a primary in June during the pandemic. We all ran for office and were elected during the pandemic. We knew what part of this job was going to be when we got here, and that was going to make sure that we could uh, do the job like hardworking Iowans all across the state are doing. And we have a job to do when we're here doing it in a very responsible way. And so uh, whether those frustrations exist from across the aisle, you know, we have a job to do. We all knew the circumstance we we're gonna find ourselves in when we arrived in January, and we're making sure um, uh, that we do it in a safe way. And to be quite honest with you, over 95% of the people in the house controlled space are wearing masks. So I think some of this is just a fight to have a fight. Big picture, should mask always be a voluntary thing, no mandate? Well, I would say from what we've done in here, we're getting, like I said, we're having over 95% compliance right now without having any sort of a mandate. I think that's as good of a compliance as we would get, whether you put additional language in or not. So I think we have displayed that you're going to have compliance by just making sure that you, people understand uh, why it's important to wear them. We're seeing that in the house right now. You don't have to have a mandate to have almost everyone comply. Up next, what changes the speaker expects in educating Iowa students and where he's not yet sure that change could happen this year.